we can use a powerful new feature available in Revit 2012 to more effectively model and document the views necessary to construct prefabricated building elements. For this example, we'll be working in Revit structure and looking at a series of precast concrete column elements along with the rebar they contain. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at that precast concrete column and the rebar. Our model of the precast column is actually made up of a number of different elements. There's the structural column itself, complete with the haunches on the sides, as well as a series of different rebar elements that will be embedded in the precast concrete. Let's zoom out and take a look at the entire project. You can see that we'll be using this precast column in many different places throughout the project. Copying that column and all of the separate rebar elements around all of the different locations where it will be needed would actually be a very inefficient way to work. And if any changes were necessary to the column or the rebar, we'd have to replicate those changes manually to all the different placed instances. Prior to the introduction of the new assemblies feature in Revit 2012, we might have created a group containing the column and the rebar elements and duplicated this throughout the project. This is a good solution for repeating the geometry, but still has a few limitations. Groups cannot be included in schedules, so we'd have to come up with another way to tally those grouped elements. Also, any views that we'd create to describe the details of the column and the rebar would be embedded in the model itself, which clutters things up and makes them harder to find. Assemblies provide a better solution for those two problems, so let's take a look at how we could apply them in this case. Let's zoom in again on one of the columns and create an assembly that contains its elements. To create a new assembly, we select the elements which should be included, in this case the structural column and the rebar elements. Then in the Contextual Modify tab, we choose the Create Assembly tool. And we'll be asked to provide a name for our assembly. Let's go ahead and call that Precast Column A. We also give a category to our assembly. And the category choices are based on the categories of the elements that are part of the assembly, in this case the columns and the rebar. This is going to be the primary category this new assembly will belong to, and we'll choose to have this precast column assembly associated with a structural column type. Let's say OK. We'll click away. And now if we choose the assembly, you'll see the entire assembly is chosen as a single unit. Assemblies that we create appear in the project browser at the bottom of the list. We can expand the assemblies section of the browser and you'll see that the precast column A is listed there. Having created our new precast column assembly, we can now replace other instances where those elements occur in the project with the assembly so that they will all be associated and understood to be the same element. Let's zoom out and we'll choose another instance where that column and rebar have been placed in the project. If we drag to select this group and choose to create an assembly from that group, you'll see that the selected group of elements already matches an existing assembly. So rather than creating a new one, Revit will match these elements to the existing assembly. We'll say OK to accept that. We can do the same thing here. Again saying create an assembly. And once again it matches because the same elements have already been turned into an assembly. Say OK. We'll do that for the remaining instances of this precast column assembly. To keep track of the assemblies that we've created, we can schedule them. Switching to the View tab and choosing the Schedules tool, we can choose to schedule assemblies. We'll say OK to that. Then choose the fields to display. We'll choose the naming category, as well as the family and type. And finally, we'll include an assembly description. Say OK to that. And you'll see that we've created a schedule listing all the structural column assemblies showing that their type is precast column A, and we have a description field where we can enter any specific notes that describe an instance of the assembly. Let's return to the 3D view and look at how we can edit those assemblies.
One of the very powerful features and key advantages of working with assemblies is that any changes we make to an assembly will be reflected in all of the different instances of the assembly. Let's zoom in again on one of the assemblies and make a few changes and see how that works. Although these elements are grouped into an assembly, we can still edit them individually. So for example, if we hover over the assembly and tab, you'll see that we can still select the individual elements, for example, the structural column. If we go to the Properties palette and change the parameters that define that column, for example, let's change the Corbel Distance to be, say, 2 foot 4 as opposed to 2 foot 0, we can apply that change. And notice that Revit is warning us that it needs to create a new assembly type. This is being done so we'll have a choice of specifying that the prefabricated elements will use the old dimensions or the new dimensions. We'll say OK. And note that we have a new type of precast column, precast column B, appearing in the assembly list. We can also edit our assemblies to change the elements that they contained. To do that, select an assembly. Then under the Contextual Modify tab, choose the Add or Remove tool. If we'd like to add another element, we can click Add. Then choose that new element to add to our assembly. Or we can choose to remove an existing element from the assembly. When done, click Finish to accept the changes to the assembly, or Cancel to close the assembly and leave it as is. Beyond those editing features to make it easier to work with assemblies, the key advantage of creating assemblies is that you can easily create views to document them and isolate those views from the rest of the project. To do that, select an assembly, then under the Contextual Modify tab, open the Create Views tool. We're presented with a list of the different views that Revit can automatically create for us. Let's accept all those. We can choose the scale for our views. Let's raise that up to quarter inch equals a foot. And we could also choose a special title block that will apply specifically to the views for this assembly. Let's accept the default and click OK. And when we do, an entirely new series of views has been created and appears in the project browser underneath the assembly in the project browser list. There's a 3D ortho view which focuses exclusively on the elements of that assembly and filters out everything else in the project. We have detail views showing section cuts through the assembly, both from the front as well as from the side. And we also have a plan view. There's a material takeoff showing the quantities of the materials in our precast column. In this case, it's very simple. The only material that's being shown is the precast concrete with 17.27 cubic feet. There's a part list which lists all the different pieces which are included in the assembly, including the concrete column as well as all the rebar elements. And finally, there's a sheet view which will let us place all these individual views onto a single sheet that we can then send out to our fabricators. We can add annotations to any of these assembly views to fully explain the dimensions as well as the details necessary to fabricate the assembly. For example, let's switch to the detailed section view showing the front to back orientation. We can zoom in and add dimensions to that view, fully explaining the size of the column and its haunches. Let's pan up just a bit. Then we'll choose the Dimension tool and choose to add dimensions from the sides to the sides of the column, across the column, and then to the other haunch. Let me pull those out just a little bit to make them easier to read. We can also add text or keynotes to explain the details in our views. For example, let's choose a text annotation, the two-part leader, and we'll add a note indicating that that's a number five stirrup at eight inches on center. We could also add keynotes to call out the materials or the relevant construction specification or work breakdown sections. Choosing the keynote tool, we'll choose a material keynote, then we'll choose that material, and when prompted, Choose Precast Concrete.
with our assembly views created and annotations explaining the construction details added to them, we're now ready to add those views to a sheet that can be sent out to fabricators. Let's switch to the sheet view. Let's drag in the 3D ortho view. We'll add the section view from front to back, as well as the section view from side to side and add in the plan view to fully document this assembly from all perspectives. Finally, we can add the material takeoff, as well as the part list. To fully document all aspects of this assembly for the fabricators who will be building it for us.